Good morning. The first item of business this morning is consideration of business motion 10372 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a timetable for the stage three consideration of the Building's Recovery of Expenses Scotland Bill. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 10372. Moved. Thank you. No member is asked to speak against the motion. Therefore, I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 10372, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed to. We now move to general questions. Question number one, Dennis Robertson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what help can it give to GPs uh, on the recruitment and retention for rural and remote practices? Cabinet Secretary Alex Neil. Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government is working with NHS Highland to promote a range of initiatives to recruit and support GPs working in remote and rural areas throughout Scotland. Recruiting GPs into remote and rural locations is always a difficult task, and we completely understand the frustration this is causing within local communities that are without a permanent GP. One strand of work being supported by £1.5 million of funding from the Scottish Government over four years is to develop and test innovative ways of delivering health care in rural Scotland. The traditional approach to recruitment has not been successful, so as part of that work we are developing a bespoke recruitment exercise with the support of a marketing expert that will be put in place by the summer. Dennis Robertson. Hey, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Within my own constituency of Aberdeenshire West, um, I have met with several uh, GPs and their concern, Cabinet Secretary, is that their, their work uh, overload uh, is such because of the ageing population that medical students coming through the system are not going to be able to replace the GPs that are coming up for retirement. What can be done to alleviate that position? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, national recruitment data shows that recruitment into GP training remains high with a 92% fill rate. Can I also say to the member that uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning, Michael Russell and myself, have agreed recently to increase the number of trainees, but specifically to encourage trainees who live in rural areas to enrol in medical school because there's clear international evidence that people who come from rural areas, once their training is completed, they tend to go back to rural areas to live and work in. So we are tackling this problem. I recognise the uh, issues. Uh, there are many communities with particular problems, particularly in the more remote communities, but we are working with the Royal College of GPs, with the BMA, with the health boards and a range of other people to try to address this problem. Uh, I should, however, remind members that the uh, number of GPs per head in Scotland is actually the highest by far in the whole of the UK. Jimmy McGregor. Um, thank you. Does the Minister agree with me that using cash incentives to attract GPs to rural and remote practices has only had a very limited effect in the pilots that have taken place? And does he further agree that drastic measures will have to take place in order to counter the worrying trends seen across rural Scotland? And can he confirm what action he will take to create a level, level playing field between dispensing doctors and pharmacies in rural areas? Cabinet Secretary. Hey, Presiding Officer, in the latter point, the Member will be aware that I've laid regulations in relation to dispensing uh, GPs uh, and to try to deal with a situation whereby uh, if uh, there is an application for a new pharmacy in a rural area, then the consequences of uh, approving that application, the wider consequences in terms particularly of GP facilities has to be considered as part of the board's decision as to whether to accept the application or not. I suggest the member reads these regulations that are already laid before Parliament and I intend to implement them once Parliament has approved them at the earliest possible opportunity. In terms of the challenge of recruiting GPs to rural areas, this is not primarily about financial incentives uh, because we have tried financial incentives. The key issue is work-life balance and very often it's not the GP who is concerned about moving to a, a, a rural area 
Very often it's family pressure that prevent them from moving or staying in a rural area. And I'm particularly conscious of areas like West Loch Abbott, for example, in the Highlands, where we've done everything possible to recruit GPs, but uh, clearly I cannot force GPs to go live and work permanently in any particular location. But as I said previously, we do recognise the problem. It's not confined to Scotland. It's a general problem, and it's one that we are trying innovative ways to address, including the extended use of telehealth facilities in places like Colhoun, where they'll get direct access to consultancy services at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. Question two, John Finney. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many private educational establishments are entitled to 80% mandatory rates relief and how many are given relief of up to 100%. Minister Alistair Allen. Currently, any charity, including educational establishments registered with the Office of the Scottish Charity Regulator, is entitled to receive 80% mandatory relief which a local authority may decide to top up to 100%. Data on the number of private educational establishments in receipt of relief and what percentage of relief they receive is not held centrally. John Finney. Uh, I thank the Minister for that response. Well, I certainly have figures that I got from SPICE, um, and these figures show that in Edinburgh, in the last three years of figures, about £5 million of mandatory relief was given. Now, with scarce public resources, um, I don't think these money, that money should be going to the pampered and the privileged. Would the Minister agree with me that that £5 million would be better spent in public services for the many? And will he work with colleagues to ensure that, uh, that there's a removal of mandatory rates relief for these social elites? Minister. Of course, the, the decision about what constitutes a, a charity and what doesn't uh, does not come down to ministers. It, it comes down to Oscar. And there has indeed been a, a rolling review uh, of uh, all the, the private uh, educational establishments or all the private uh, schools, I should say, uh, in Scotland, with 39 schools having been examined in this way by Oscar recently uh, and uh, 35 having passed the charity test. Uh, two having failed and subsequently passed with changes and two still being considered. So these are very much questions for Oscar uh, rather than for government intervention. Question three, Liz Smith. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will review the remit of Education Scotland school inspections to include the condition of school buildings. Minister, Alistair Allen. School inspections aim to answer the following three questions. Uh, how well do young people learn and achieve? How well does the school support young people to develop and learn? And how well does the school improve the quality of its work? Local authorities have responsibility for health and safety and the structural condition of buildings. Whilst Education Scotland does not inspect the structural aspects of a school, if they do become aware of a health and safety issue while they are inspecting, they will follow up with the school and the local authority to ensure it is addressed. National guidance is provided to assist local authorities in assessing the condition of their school estate. Well, Smith. Uh, could I thank the Minister for that answer? Uh, he will know that the Cabinet Secretary quite rightly asked local authorities to review their school estate in light of the tragic accident at Liberton High School. And he will also know that Audit Scotland this week have flagged up that 18% of the school estate uh, has concern. Uh, would he agree that there is a very strong case to ensure that there is a formal recognition of uh, school buildings when it comes to school inspections? Minister. Well, I think uh, the whole chamber would uh, agree that uh, the, we must all learn lessons from the, the tragedy at Liberton. Um, the member will be aware that there's not a great deal more I can comment on about that specific uh, case, given the, the ongoing investigations around it. Uh, I think what is important to say, however, is that uh, local authorities are, are best placed to assess the condition of schools, and it is significant uh, that notwithstanding uh, everything that the member has said, it is significant that the percentage of pupils uh, in schools which are categorised as having either poor or bad buildings uh, has dropped from 37% in 2007 to 16% now. We are not complacent about that, but that, I, I would suggest, uh, indicates very substantial achievements being made. Question four, Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what flexibility there is in the national calculation method for determining the type of heating system used in large public buildings. Minister Derek Mackay. The national calculation methodology for non-domestic buildings currently includes flexibility for 24 types of heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems. These can be used to provide heating in all types of non-domestic buildings, including large public buildings. Liam MacArthur. 
I, can I thank the Minister for his response? As you may be aware, uh, Orkney hit the 100% uh, renewables target uh, seven years early last year, but this has required innovation, but has also tested the ex existing grid's capacity. It has also exposed regulatory uh, obstacles which may hamper achievement of that 100% target. Will the Minister therefore commit to look at potential derogations to existing planning requirements to enable renewably generated electricity to be more extensively used? And will he agree to consult with his colleagues, uh, Fergus Ewing and the Health Secretary, to see how both commercial and community schemes looking to supply Orkney's heating load over the coming years, particularly the new hospital, can be facilitated? Uh, yes, I will uh, uh, accede to that very reasonable uh, request from Mr MacArthur and explore all options here. I'll instruct officials to consider the, the, the detail and the potential flexibility that may well exist to take forward the agenda uh, in light of Mr MacArthur's uh, comments, whilst bearing in mind there are some legislative and regulatory uh, requirements that we have to, to, to stick within, but absolutely we will be as flexible as we can to deliver the outcome desired. Question 5, Patrick Harvey. I do apologise, Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government how the single intelligence agency it proposes to create in an independent Scotland would protect citizens from unjustified surveillance. Cabinet Secretary Ken McCaskill. Uh, as indicated in Scotland's future, striking the right balance between maintaining the constitutional and human rights of our citizens and the need for national security will be vital. Uh, for the first time, there will be democratic governance and accountability of national security matters in Scotland by a Scottish Government and Scottish Parliament. Early legislation will set out the purpose, duties and powers of a Scottish security and intelligence agency and the controls that will exist on the use of those powers. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. The Government's white paper talks about the necessary cooperation that would take place with the UK security agencies and also says that security uh, agencies, uh, some of the work undertaken by security agencies means by necessity interference with the privacy of specific individuals. But we now know, following revelations not only from the private sector but also from Charles Farr, the UK Government's own senior security official, that that is not what the UK agencies undertake. The UK agencies are very clearly undertaking mass uncontrolled surveillance of the entire population of innocent citizens. Can the Scottish Government give a clear undertaking that it will take the privacy of innocent citizens seriously and that the agencies, the policies, cooperation agreements and infrastructure will be designed in such a manner that we do not repeat this mass surveillance of the entire population. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I can give that assurance. I think it's quite clear uh, that not only will we be sure that we enshrine it within the Constitution to provide rights for the individual citizen, but there will not only be the commissioners, but they'll also be subject to appropriate parliamentary scrutiny here. Uh, what I can say is it does appear to me that this requires to be the balance between the rights of the individual and the rights of indeed of the wider community. Uh, so far, I believe that uh, certainly with regard to serious organised crime that does come before me and is dealt with by Police Scotland, we do have that appropriate balance of proportionality uh, and indeed of scrutiny. Uh, what we have to ensure is that when the full powers come, that this applies because the rights and the issue will be of even greater magnitude. But I think we can give that assurance, and I can certainly say that with regard to how serious organised crime and other aspects of intrusion are dealt with in Scotland at the present moment by Police Scotland and indeed other agencies, we do strike that correct balance. Graham Pearson. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, ahead of uh, any changes that may occur and suggested by the Cabinet Secretary, could he share with the Parliament, does he have any evidence currently to suggest surveillance is conducted by any police or other agency organisation in breach of uh, the law? Cabinet Secretary. I was saying in response to Patrick Harvey's initial question, I am only aware of matters that relate to serious organised crime. Uh, terrorism is reserved and uh, issues at relate to that would go to the Home Secretary and would not come uh, to myself. Uh, what I can say with regard to serious organised crime, I believe that matters are dealt with appropriately. I deal with the Commissioner, I deal with Police Scotland, and I think the correct balance is struck. Uh, but clearly what I, I cannot comment on uh, are the matters of concern raised by Patrick Harvey about issues that relate to terrorism because neither myself as a Justice Secretary uh, nor indeed any other uh, parliamentarian or government minister in Scotland is entitled to receive that. It all goes to the South. 
Question number six, John Pentland. To ask the Scottish Government when the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Wellbeing last met with the Chief Executive of NHS Lanarkshire and what was discussed. Cabinet Secretary Alex Neil. Presenting officer, ministers and officials regularly meet the chief executives of all health boards, including NHS Lanarkshire, to discuss matters of importance to local people. John Pentland. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer? However, President Officer, surely the Cabinet Secretary must understand or at least admit that in his watch, Lanarkshire NHS has moved from crisis to crisis, with waiting times, negligent payments and other indicators amongst the one, the Scotland's worst. Investigations such as neonatal deaths and mortality rates and 12 consultants and other senior staff maligned by the Health Secretary as so-called experts. So isn't it time this Cabinet Secretary took the advice of the front of Tuesday's daily record to get a grip by setting up an independent inspection system able to proactively investigate every aspect of NHS in Lanarkshire and Scotland and able to tackle problems as soon as they are flagged up rather than waiting a year before taking action. Cabinet Secretary. Presi Presiding Officer, we already have an independent inspection system in Scotland, and the neonatal unit at Wishaw General Hospital was independently inspected, and the inspection showed that the very high standard of care is present in the neonatal unit at Wishaw General Hospital, and I hope the member will join with me in condemning the comments made yesterday in this chamber by Joanne Lament when she said you would be best advised not to give birth to a child in Wishaw. That is a slur on the professionalism of every dedicated doctor, every dedicated midwife, every dedicated nurse, both in the neonatal unit and in the maternity unit at Wishaw General. And her and John Pentland should hold their heads in shame at their attacks on the workers in the National Health Service. Linda Fabiani. Linda Fabiani. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware, of course, that NHS Lanarkshire has now created dedicated on-site hospital management teams. Um, does the Cabinet Secretary feel that this will contribute to improvement in patient care and, indeed, patient and visitor confidence in their local hospitals, in that they work for them? And will the Cabinet Secretary uh, take up my invitation to visit with Hermeyer's Hospital to check how this new system is working in practice? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, the uh, NHS Lanarkshire Review highlighted the need to reform the management system within NHS Lanarkshire. And I think the new system that's been, been introduced will be much more effective in dealing with issues that uh, need to be dealt with and the challenges in uh, serving the people of Lanarkshire. It's early days yet, but in the three hospitals, we now have a tripartite site management team with a site director, a head nurse who's effectively like the matron used to be in older days, and with a senior clinician in each of the three acute sites. And I'm more than happy to visit with Linda Fabiani to hear Myers. I've already visited Monklands twice. I had the pleasure of uh, cutting the sod on the £22 million new Lanarkshire Beetson Centre last week. And I note that no member of the opposition, other than the Conservative Margaret Mitchell, no other opposition party welcomed that £22 million investment in NHS Lanarkshire. Question number seven, Alex Johnson. To ask the Scottish Government whether it considers that the number of missed bin collections over the last two years is evidence of the failure of its concordat with local government. Minister Derek Mackay. <laughs> uh, no, we don't. Uh, our, <laughs> our concordat with local government has set out the terms of the new relationship based on mutual trust and, and partnership. Uh, councils have the freedom to focus on local concerns whilst contributing to the achievement of better national outcomes. It is for councils to ensure they carry out their duties effectively and efficiently, including on waste and recycling. The Accounts Commission arranges audits of councils to help ensure they are delivering effectively and provide best value. Alex Johnson. I thank the Minister for his answer and I understand what he's trying to say. But if we look, for example, at the recycling system, surely the complexity and diversity of the system with multicoloured bins, put people putting them out on the wrong day, bins remaining unemptied uh, and missed collections is evidence that there is a failing in the system of recycling. And would it not have been at least one legacy of the historic concordat if the Scottish Government and local government could have worked together to end that confusion? Minister. Uh, 
Well, I can advise Mr Johnson that Tory councils, as few as they are, miss bin collections from time to time as well. I thought if it wasn't the Concordat, maybe the Conservatives would have thought it was the Constitution getting in the way of miss bin collections. But in reality, we've hit record levels of recycling. We're meeting the zero waste strategy targets. Recycling rates are up. Put it into perspective. The bins continue to be collected and all the more reason because of the fantastic uh, financial package and protection that Scottish local authorities get from this government, which is quite different from south of the border, where they've got the worst of all worlds, council tax rises, reductions uh, in I services think we get the and reductions in so on. So the Concordat continues. We now move to the First Minister's questions. Question number one, Joanne.